people are going to be coming to pray. And um, let me tell you who's going to be coming and what they're going to be praying over. This is the 30 minutes, three times a month we spend studying the scriptures, and then one time a month we spend praying. How many know it's important to do this? And it's valuable. And, you know, Lisa and I get to, we're doing another training Saturday with a church in High Point called Renaissance Church. And, and we teach on, first thing we talk about is spiritual movement. Nothing happens without spiritual movement. And, and if not, man, we're just a Kiwanis Club or the Breakfast Optimist Club. I mean, that's fine, but we're the church of Jesus Christ. And our words are not just positive, they're powerful. And our prayers, and how do we create spiritual movement? Three ways, through worship, through prayer, through the declarations of your mouth. Whatever you're proclaiming over your city and your life. And there's a scripture in Mark chapter 2. It says, when Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so filled with visitors, there was no more room even outside the door. He was preaching God's word to them. Um, for men, men were carrying a paralyzed man on a mat, couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So these guys had their friend who was sick. They couldn't get in the door. Instead of looking around and saying, well, let's go into the restaurant, they did something different. They said they dug a hole through the roof above his head and then lowered their friend on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, now that's what I want you to notice. The man was healed because of the faith of his friends. You can pray for someone tonight and your faith can heal them according to the Bible. <clears throat> and that's what inspires me about this. He, they, they lowered him through the hole and Jesus said, paralyzed man, First of all, he says, your sins have been forgiven. That's why we pray for lost people. Because the greatest need people have is salvation. So this story <coughs> gets my heart ready to pray tonight. And what's going to happen is Pamela's going to come. She's going to pray for the next generation. And we do that constantly because how do we know they're in a battle? And then Lisa's going to come. She's going to pray for salvations and deliverance. Jamila's going to come. How do we know we can pray jobs into the city? We can pray for the government. She's going to be praying over those kind of things. And then at the end, <coughs> excuse my cough, especially after Ashley's words, we're just going to come to the altar and believe for our own healing. How many are ready to pray tonight? Because we don't want to pray by ourselves, man. There's power and agreement. And this time it's so important. So I'm going to pray, and then Pamela's going to come up and pray. Hey, man, get in your prayer position right now. Because we're here to create some spiritual movement tonight. God, we thank you that we just read that Jesus healed a man based on the faith of his friends. And God, we're here to make intercession for the nation, for students. God, for people that need to be born again, for people that need deliverance. And Lord, as the prayers go up, it's not just the person praying, it's all of us agreeing, affirming. And, and, and God, we thank you for just opening up the heavens tonight as we begin to pray. So I want you to, Pamela, would you come? And let's just go ahead and if you need to walk around, you need to bow, kneel. My challenge to you tonight is don't let these guys pray alone. Be engaged in prayer. If you believe in that, just clap to the Lord for a minute as we get into invest in prayer tonight. Amen. volunteered with the kids it's just an insert please do so mm. I tell you I was touched on Sunday and, and many Sundays I've been touched because I go and and I ask them you know what are the promises of God that you've seen come fulfilled in your life and one of the little girls Larissa Cora, Cora said he kept me in my mommy's womb my mommy's tummy and that touched me because if you know Cora, we've been praying for her for a long time. And it was such a great reminder that if we don't teach them, who will? Who's going to carry it forward? 
And the most saddest verse, I think, in, in the Bible is Judges 2, verse 10, that says, after that whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what, nor what he had done for Israel. And the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord because they knew no better. So let's not let this next generation pass by and they not know. So I want to pray for every family, every every person, every teacher, every every parent, every grandparent, anyone who has any contact with the next generation, that they will instill the love and the goodness of God into their hearts and their minds. And Lord Father, right now I pray for parents. I pray for parents who may be tired and weary, God. I pray that they not grow weary, Lord Father, that you strengthen them, that you remind them, Lord Father, that God, you have been so, so good. And that that child that they are raising, Father Lord, has gifts and talents that you've given them for such a time as this. And they can't be wasted, God. God, I pray that you help them, guide them, give them wisdom, Lord Father, as they're nurturing these children with every hug, with every word that they say. Lord Father, may they be blessed, Lord Father, and they see the fruits of their labor. God, I pray that you remind them as you reminded me with poor Lord Father, that even from a young age, they know, they know how real you are, that you've kept them and that you've protected them and that you are with them wherever they go. God, I pray that this next generation know you, that know the way, that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and that, I, that there is no way to our Father except through our Jesus Christ, God. Holy Spirit, move in them. Move in them. Ignite a fire that doesn't cease. May they be on fire for you, and may that fire spread, God, to the schools, to our communities, Lord Father. Holy Spirit, Rise up prophets and leaders and worshipers that are worship in spirit and in truth from a young age, Father Lord, till they're old. May they not forget who you are, God. We pray that they would know you, truly know you, that they would love you, and that they will walk with you all the days of their life. Place a hunger in their heart for your word. May they desire to study and to know who you are not because of what someone else said, but for themselves, Lord Father. I pray, Father Lord, that you raise up missionaries, God, that they're ready and on fire to take your word to other nations, Lord Father, to their communities and everywhere they go, Lord. Raise up pastors and evangelists, leaders and followers of Christ that are radical, who share their faith unapologetically, Lord Father, with all those that they come around. May their lives be a reflection of the fruits of the Spirit, Lord Father. I pray, Father Lord, that you raise up, Father Lord, this generation that cares more about what you care about than about what the world cares about, God. May they not be swayed by the culture um, or the times, but instead they be like a tree planted near the streams of water that flows, the Father Lord, and that cannot be moved, God. God, I pray, Lord, Father, that they be secure in who they are because they know that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. Father, Lord, that their identity is found in you and not what other people say, Lord, Father. God, I pray that they're able to speak life and truth to their peers, Lord. I pray a protection over their minds, over their hearts, over their bodies right now in the name of Jesus. We declare that no spirit of depression no spirit of anxiety, no spirit of suicide, Father Lord, no spirit, Father Lord, of, of evil or wickedness will abound, Father, but instead you abound in their heart, Lord Father. God, I pray that you protect their minds, Father, that the joy of the Lord be their strength, Lord. God, I pray that there be, Father Lord, um, what we would think is, is maybe laziness or maybe, Father, things that we don't understand. Father, use gifts and use talents, Lord Father, to help us remember that you are a God that's in control and that you have created them exactly how they are, Father, and you're going to use it for your glory. God, I just thank you. And God, I pray for that 
that generation, Lord Father, maybe we have kids that have gone astray, Lord Father. We call them back, back to you right now in the name of Jesus. Those that were raised in the church and maybe have forgotten, Lord Father, who you are. God, right now, wherever they are, Holy Spirit, move in them. Ignite a fire and waken them up. Turn their hearts of stone to a heart of flesh, Lord Father. Break them down in their living rooms, in their bedrooms, God. May they seek you and find you, Lord, like never before. God, I thank you. Thank you, Father, Lord, because I know, Father, Lord, that they were created for such a time as this. And I know that from even from today, they will begin doing mighty and wonderful works for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus believe that shout amen tonight amen Lisa's gonna come and pray for salvations and healings can y'all give God some glory and some praise in this house amen amen you know I'm so thankful that God has raised up Rise Church at such a time as this to be in our communities I'm so thankful for those that have come forward, especially in the last few weeks, that have given their lives to Jesus Christ, that have said, yes, I want to follow, I want to serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Do you realize how important and how significant it is? Do you realize that on nights like tonight has caused for that harvest to come? But I'm telling you, there's more of a harvest that it needs to come, that is coming. And we need to be prepared. We need to be continuously standing in the gap. I'm so thankful, so thankful for those that have come and rededicated their hearts and their lives to Jesus Christ. But it's not finished. The work is not done. Our hearts should be hurting and breaking for what breaks our Heavenly Father's heart. It's the separation. It's the separation that, that there is between your co-workers, your family members, the people in your communities, on your job, everywhere. Our job is not finished. And we need to have that passion for the lost. And as we do, I believe God will continue to answer those prayers. I'm asking him that you will get a glimpse and a vision of how powerful your prayers are. They're like an arrow that when we are praying and interceding, how passionate are you praying and believing? Do those arrows just go and fall like a dud? Or are they penetrating a hard heart, a stony heart? Because you know, this world is singeing. It is singeing their heart. is bringing that conviction on our prodigals that walked away. Their heart became hard in areas. We're asking that God's love would penetrate those hearts, right? Through the power of his word, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is exactly what we're doing tonight as we claim salvation and souls, people we will never know or meet until we get to heaven. We have to see the big picture. We have to grasp our mission, our mission. Because it's through the salvation that deliverance comes. So just like Pastor talked about bringing that one in and lowering him down, that's what we're doing. We're standing in the gap and we're praying. We're praying for the people that the Penleys were talking about in areas and communities and territories that we do not know and we can never reach. So I'm so thankful that God tells us in Psalms that we are the righteous ones who cry out, that we cry out and the Lord hears us and he delivers. So we're asking him to go and to deliver these that we are standing in the gap for. He is calling us to call forth the lost so that they can become disciples of Jesus Christ, not just to know him, but to serve him wholeheartedly and passionately, believing for the miracles that God talks about that they are for today, 
there for today. So join me as we continue to pray. God, we thank you and we worship you, God, because of who you are. We thank you and we praise you for those that have come to know you through the doors of Rise Church and through the members who are out there being evangelistic and witnessing. God, I pray that you would give them a boldness. God, that you would let them be able to go into places and be able to be the light that you have called us to be, Father. That you would anoint their hearts and their lips, God, to walk in authority and boldness, not to shy back, not to be, oh, I'm concerned about being a God, that we would save, the, send the message of salvation to those that are lost, God. Father, I don't want to stand before you and say, why did you not say because you were afraid they would be offended? God, we need to save, send the message of salvation, God, so that they know and they hear. But God, we ask that you would prepare their hearts. You would prepare their spirits, God. Those that have hearts that are hard, God, that have been singed, God, by the world that sin has taken over, God. We ask that those hearts, God, would become soft. They would become pliable in the name of Jesus so that these prayers that we are praying, God, that they don't fall dead, God, that they go straight to the hearts and the spirits and the souls of people, God, that will know you, that will serve you, God, that will shed the life of sin and the things that hinder them, that will not go into the things of this world, that they will not serve man and this world, but God, that they will completely serve you. God, that they would abandon these things. God, that they would want to live holy and righteous and blameless lives before you, God, so that they can be effective in your mission in your purpose, God, with the gifts and the talents that you have already placed in them. So, God, we speak to them right now in the name of Jesus. We call them from the north. We call them from the south. We call them from the west. We call them from the east in the name of Jesus. God, we claim the territory around Rice Church, the 30 and 45 miles around each and every single one of our campuses, God. We claim them in the name of Jesus. God, we claim salvation in our our colleges, in our universities, in our schools, in the name of Jesus. God, that you would save our parents and our homes and our families, God, in Jesus' name. God, we know that you are preparing Rise Church. You are preparing the kingdom of God for the great awakening. You are preparing them for the harvest that is coming. God, may we be ready. May we be ready. May we be what you've called us to be. May we have the fire and the passion and the life that is worthy of calling you our Lord and our Savior. God, may we be ready. May we be ready. Because you won't send them unless we're ready. God, prepare us. Do whatever you need to do. Humble us. Do whatever you need to do, God. May we repent and turn from our own wickedness and our own sins. God, so that we would not cause one of these young ones to come in and stumble that is in their new faith. God, help us to be your sons and daughters, your servants, your ambassadors, your teachers, your disciples. God, teach us, lead us, create in us a clean, pure heart, Father. Clean, pure heart, Father, that we'll be able to be a mentor and an encouragement to the lost that you're sending this way in the name of Jesus, we claim it. God, we claim every prodigal son and daughter in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we take authority over every plot, plan, and scheme of the enemy that has led them astray, whether it's by their own device, by their own selfish will, their own flesh. God, we take authority over it right now in the name of Jesus. We break every stronghold. We break every lie. We break every offense in the name of Jesus Christ. And we ask God that you would soften those hearts. That God, even tonight, that as they sleep, they hear you. They hear your voice calling them by their name, their full name. That they would know that you're speaking directly to them as the son or daughter that you have already called them to be. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you in the name of Jesus 
for bringing them back because God, there is a great purpose in their lives and the enemy is trying to rob them. And so God, we ask that in this moment that those callings, those callings be set ablaze set ablaze by the Holy Spirit. I saw it earlier where you were lighting the fuse. God, I ask that you would light the fuse right now in the name of Jesus by the Holy Spirit. Oh, God, everyone that you have called for your kingdom and for your glory, that will extend, extend your calling. Oh, Father, I thank you that a great fire is ablaze. Oh, God, we thank you in Jesus' name. Oh, God, consume them. Holy Spirit, we give you permission to rule and reign, God. Go wherever they are in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, thank you, Holy Spirit. Baptize them fresh and anew. Give them dreams and visions. Reconfirm. In their hearts, the things that you spoke to them, that you spoke over them, may it come alive in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we pray, God, for those that need healing and deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. We bind up every attack of the enemy in Jesus' name. We say he is here as a counterfeit. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. And we bind him up in the name of Jesus. We take authority over him. We cast him back to the abyss where he was called forth from. And we lose the power of the name and the authority of Jesus Christ. Father, over minds in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, loose minds of fear of mental situations, of anxiety, of panic attacks, God, of the fear of the unknown. We cast and we bind it right now in Jesus' name and we loose the mind of Christ. Oh, Jesus. I thank you, Father, that you're delivering people from all types of addictions, whether it's pornography, alcohol, substance, whatever it is, God, right now that those chains are coming off. They're being broken. They are being freed from those things that they have no more entanglement. God, I pray that even now that they're free, that they don't look back. They don't look back at those things, and they do not try to pick them back up in the name of Jesus. That, God, that you're replacing each and every one of those things with with your spirit, with your power, with your love, with something of your word that will just continue to satisfy them more than they will ever know in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you for your healing power. God, there are those that are in hospitals, those that are in rehab centers. God, we ask you to go right now, your Holy Spirit, to walk through. As I go through those rooms, those halls, God, My heart is heavy, but I just stand and I say, Jesus, as I walk through, just like the shadows of the disciples when they would go through, God, let your power and your spirit just go into every single room right now. God, that you would heal, you would deliver, you would set free, you would restore. Those that can't walk, that they would walk. Those that can't hear, that they would hear. God, whatever it is, we ask in Jesus' name for the power of your healing to flow in our bodies, in our families, in our loved ones, in our church members, in our community, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that hospitals and rehab places would be abandoned because Jesus has walked through, through the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, for hearing every one of these prayers. We thank you, God, that there will be testimonies connected to every one of these prayers. In the mighty name of Jesus, and we all said, amen. 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 Applaud God for that. Amen. If you agree with that, Jamila's coming. We're going to pray for jobs. We're going to pray for those in authority as we're charged to do in the Bible. Let's agree together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. As my assignment is to play, pray for the economy and the government, I was reminded today 
at the primary function and the primary function of the economy and the government was to maintain order, to protect its citizens, to provide laws, and to manage conflicts. And somehow or another, we've allowed the enemy to come in and use division and discord as a tactic for what was set up to keep us unified and keep us in order. So I believe it's our job and our responsibility as the church, as the ecclesia, as the body of Christ to understand that it was called, that we were called to bring about the order. That we can set the standard. I, I, I don't care who's in power or position or authority that us as the body of Christ, as the believers can stand and declare unity. See, I'm reminded of the scripture of Psalms 133 that says, how good and pleasant is it when brothers live together in unity? And I, I, one, one way and one thing I, that I love about Rise Church is that we're a melting pot. And that you'll see all types of people and denominations or, or, or all types of backgrounds all types of races and cultures. I love that Joy just prayed up here in Spanish because all I know is that every once in a while he said Jesus. <laughs> Whether we understood it or not, we understand his heart. And his heart is for Jesus. So it comes back to us as we think about this is election season and the enemy is going to try his best to try to continue to divide. But I declare that we're going to stand in unity and oneness. I'm going to tell you to exercise your right to vote. But at the end of the day, let us stand and declare that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And that God is going to open up the windows in heaven and pour out his blessings among us that we be creative and have these amazing ideas that we can all be the people that he used to create the jobs that we be the people that he can trust with much because to much is given much is required and God I'm telling you right now that God is charging us as the believers in the body of Christ to elevate our faith to know that we have a responsibility in this land, in this season, in this moment, in this time. So let us pray. And Father, in the name of Jesus, is our assignment is to pray for the economy, oh God. But Father, sometimes I have questions and I say, how can we pray for the economy when I'm standing in need myself? God says, will you trust me? So right now in the name of Jesus, Father, we exercise our faith to trust you, oh Lord. Even when we need, Father, we trust you. And we pray right now that you will open up the windows of heaven, pour out your blessing over our local government, over our city right now, over our state, over our nation, all around this world, Father, we pray that we can come back as the body of Christ and remember that we can dwell together in unity despite differences, oh God. We pray, Almighty God, that as things are fluctuating up and down, prices are going up, things are getting scarce, that we can continue to call upon your name, Jesus, to know that you will provide, that yet you will make a way of escape, that when we call upon your name, Jesus, that all of a sudden our prayers are heard and answered. So we thank you right now 
for being a great provider. We thank you right now for being the great guider, the protector, as we're going through these seasons of uncertainty, Father. We pray right now that jobs will be created, that we can replenish the economy in what they say is a recession, O oh Lord. But we pray, Almighty God, that you, O oh Lord, with your uh, incredible and amazing hand, be in control of it all, Father. We thank you right now, Jesus, that we're going to stand firm on your word. And we're not going to be tossed to and fro, Jesus, that we're going to stand firm and understand that you're calling us to be the light in this dark place. That we are called to be unity. That we are called to love. That we are called to purpose, oh God. Show yourself strong and mighty in our lives. Show yourself strong and mighty to those who are in need. Father, we need to be able to survive and thrive that we can help somebody else in their time of need. God, we thank you for all that you're doing. We lift up the government right now in the name of Jesus. God him knows they need you, Lord. We stand in the gap that regardless, Father, regardless of who's in position, power, and authority, that they know to call upon your name, Jesus, that they may make wise and right decisions according to your plan and your purpose, oh God. We don't need you just in Washington. We need you right here in Rocky Mountain. We need you in Nashville. We need you in Wilson. We need you in North Carolina. We need you in this nation. Even as our allies, Father, as a person who's been in a war situation before, we pray right now for the allies. Because we know, God, that you, you can because you're able to bring about peace. The peace that passes all understanding. We call upon you, Jesus, the Prince of Peace. And we remember your scripture that we will dwell together in unity, in love, in oneness. That we will, even as we exercise our rights, we will remember that we can dwell together in unity and love and oneness. That we can agree, oh God, even as we disagree. That it all comes back to your word, Jesus. And we want you to have your divine way. That we will remember that we can exercise our love and compassion for people outside of these walls. It's easy to do it inside these walls. <laughs> but God, you're calling us to exercise our love and compassion outside of these walls. So we say, have your divine way, Father, in this economy. Have your divine way in the government. Bring us back to you, oh God. Before you come back, Jesus, let us see how good it is for us to dwell amongst our brothers in unity, in love. So we thank you for it all. We remember that it was called, it was, it was created to bring about order. And Father, we know that you are the God of order. Bring it back to order. We cast the devil out. We cast him out. And we say, Lord, have your way. What is bound on earth is bound in heaven. What is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. And Father, we thank you that your glory is loosed. We see in the natural what may be going on. But Father, we declare in the spirit that we are victorious. In the name of Jesus, and we thank you 
We give you glory. All the honor belongs to you, almighty God. We trust you. And we say, have your divine way. In Jesus' name. All the believers said. Somebody shout to God for that tonight. Amen. Can we stand to our feet and give him praise and just begin to, all of us just begin to come to this altar, just begin to gather as we cover the prayers with our worship now. We worship you, God.